over the remainder of what we want to crunch through. We're on the clock here, Robbo. We've Has got 360, West... have we got 360? No, again? no, we've used up two minutes of that. You Has West Coast long. convinced you yet? Seven and two. Not quite. <laughs> You're a hard taskmaster. Well, it's only nine rounds, no, and, and, right. and with their draw, they're going to get more challenges. But they were challenged on the weekend by Geelong, and they disposed of them quite comfortably, Jared. And in a manner that I look at the way they play and say, they have got weapons. They defend and they run. I mean, and they and they swap them pretty pretty easy. And as as a team, and then, and they've got Josh Kennedy, who's just a, he's just a superstar mm. forward. And it's not just him, but they've just got a lot of depth. And um, clearly Adam Simpson is a coach, if we're judging him from afar. He's got a group of players together who've got a lot of resolve and they've got a game plan which is working, but they will get challenged more. And I hope, I hope they stand up. Is Nick Nats the mark of the year? Yes, I refuse to believe there could be anything there better than be. this. And if there is, I hope I'm there to see it. He jumped, so he's 201 centimetres, yep. and he jumped up over the top of Callum Sinclair, who's 200 centimetres. That's 401 centimetres. Well, he did have <laughs> one bent leg, so you're going to have to make your adjustments well, how much there. Is, how, how many, any feet? Tell that me that is feet. a long way off the ground. That is a long way off the ground. How many metres is that? Well, I don't want to throw you on the so spot it's four here. Metre, he's three. He's taking that. I reckon he's taking that. Three. At least three and a half metres in the air. Right. I, I said today. I reckon he was eighteen foot. Yeah. It's just about that. It when I saw it, just I leapt. I yeah. went ah! <laughs> yeah. Dog jumped up. Yeah. Thought it I was, was dying. <laughs> When you have a look at the clubs, this is what so jumps... it's across the board. It is. It's everywhere, Jared. Have a look at the club tallies, the individual tallies. You can see it's happened ten times Against. to Carlton. Yep. It's happened nine times to the Gold Coast. Uh, the dogs are good offensively and then give up a fair bit defensively. It just, it just surprises me. And, and you, you can read into this and tick off how your coach is going in a lot of ways. How's my coach going? And a couple jumped off the, the map. Oh, West Coast on him once. Eagle. Fantastic for Adam Simpson. Defensively. Yeah. Well, as it happens, facing off against Darren Crocker in his first game back as the North Melbourne coach as the stand-in is uh, a former teammate and I think a pretty close mate, I'm sure, in Adam Simpson, of course, is in charge of the rampaging West Coast Eagles. And uh, Adam Simpson joins us on the line from Perth. Uh, good evening to you, Adam. How are you going? Thanks for joining us. Uh, going well, boys. Um, there's a, the confusion at North, I suppose, or the dramas there during the week. Does that change anything in terms of your planning or expectations about what they might do? No, I'm not buying into it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, look, to be honest, we're, we're planning for a, for a red-hot North Melbourne and, you know, playing down there in, in Hobart and uh, home away from home for them. And, oh, look, I'm anticipating a pretty fierce contest. They've got their captain back and I think they'll be uh, coming with all, uh, all guns blazing on the weekend. So we've got to prepare well. You've had uh, some tests. You've won six in a row. You've had some tough tests. Do you think, given the backs to the wall and the history of North facing that sort of scenario, this is your toughest one so far? Yeah, probably. Uh, especially, uh, I mean, we, we played Port Adelaide in, in Port Adelaide and I thought that was probably our best win of the year. And um, we, we got challenged by the Cats early on, on on the weekend and I thought we responded really well. So uh, we're slowly uh, ticking some boxes, but you know, I would have thought this is another level this weekend. And considering where everyone's at at the moment and the the, the season's in balance for, for a lot of clubs and uh, this is a really important week for us as well. So when you when you out, others outside look at the West Coast Eagles, you look at them and you say, geez, they play good football. Exactly what do they do well? And I probably watched seven of your games this year and tell me if this is really simplistic. Your midfield, we all knew what Prince could do, but Gaff's, Gaff's really came of, come of age. Maston, I reckon, at, what is he, 24, 25? He's playing the best footy of his career. Yo's come in as is shown to be a, a real a real star in the making. Um, Shuey's found consistency. You've got more players going for the midfield. Is it that midfield group, you think, that's really really set, uh, set the Eagles on their path? Uh, it's a good question, Rob. I, I suppose at the moment I, I feel like our players have... Um, the, the step we've taken in the last couple of months is... They're just showing commitment to each other, and at the moment they're not. We're not really relying on a, um, a Nat Nui or, or, or Josh Kennedy to step up and have a, an outstanding game. We're, we're sharing the load a bit more, which is a sign of a, a hopefully a good side that can play consistent footy. And you know, it's pretty simple when you get contributors like we are at the moment through the midfield, and it's not all about Prudis getting 30 touches and 10 clearances. It's 
sharing of the load. And um, look, I think at the same time we're we find a good balance with our attack and, and we're defending really well as well at the moment. So, um, but things can change pretty quick as as we all know. So I'm not uh, I'm definitely not getting ahead of myself or not the players. And this week will be a massive challenge. The style of football, there's no doubt you've been coaching over your two previous pre-seasons, Simo, but you just said the commitment to each other. How, how, how does that come about? Is that coach-driven? Is that, is that player leadership group-driven or is it player-driven? It's Oh, I suppose it's all combined, Robbo, and I think every club, I know the two clubs I was at previously had the same uh, aspirations. You want a really united group and a united club. So we've been driving that, you know, for, for the, my whole time here and, um, you know, I think it's paying off on field and they're a tight group and they've got no choice. They travel each other every second week for three days. So um, there's no need to do any uh, external activities. They spend so much time together and uh, I've noticed the real united group uh, off the field and I think it's paying dividends on the field. So I know it's pretty simplistic, but um, they're definitely committed to each other at the moment. You know, I was talking about that midfield group. I mean, if someone else sat down and asked you a question and say the all-over ground defence has been really, really strong, and it has. But I just want to ask you about two individuals which, with Darling out, we know what Josh Kennedy's doing. He's doing it fantastic. But Cripps and Hill are two players who have become really settled in, in that forward 50 and they're kicking goals. I mean, some clubs are crying out for two players of that size and that sort of goal-kicking now. You've got a couple. I mean, how, how beneficial is that? Yeah, I'm sort of hoping you didn't ask about Chris, uh, Cripps because uh, he's, uh, he's under the radar, but he'd be the number one forward pressure player in the competition at the moment. And uh, he, he knows his role now and he really understands it. And along with Hill, who he's probably benefited from some tolls around him, um, and our forward pressure was something that I inherited when I got here. And, you know, with um, Justin Longmuir have been the forward line coach for a number of years now here. It's, it's the number one priority and, and Cripps is leading the charge. So we are, we are happy with how he's going at the moment. Well, congratulations on, that, on how you are going. Uh, we've got a busy show, so we're going to leave it there. But uh, huge game, as you said, against North and uh, well played so far. Appreciate it, boys. So there wasn't much in it. Beware if you're still underrating the <laughs> Eagles because uh, they are a powerful unit. They are getting the absolute best out of themselves and Adam Simpson should be congratulated. But uh, they've got a scary side. Uh, if this is their best side in. At the moment we've got uh, half a dozen players who are out of it. Butler, Schofield, Nelson, Hearn, McGovern and Wellingham, Shepard, Prittis and Duggan, Lacra, McInnes and Marston, Cripps, Kennedy and Hill... Yeah. Nat and Nui Shui. Now they've still got. So that's the team. That's the team on the weekend. That's the team on the weekend. If Look at the quality the of guns, players to come in, Jared. Yeah. Mackenzie's a gun. Yep. Darling's a gun. Now yep. I'm not sure whether Darling ends up playing forward up on a wing, or whether well, or not he plays in that fo that forward. Because at the moment yeah. their their forward line is playing. But I know one thing. He's in that side. Yeah. Yo comes back in Rosa, yep. and then they've got. Brown, Sheed, Lysette, all as emergencies. It's you, powerful, isn't it? You need a... Uh, it is very powerful. They can get you at a top four, and they're a good chance to be a top four, but you need a strong spine to win a premiership. And at the moment, they don't have that. Obviously, Darling's not there. We know Mackenzie and Brown are not going to be able to get back this year. That's still going to be the long-term question mark, but... How good's I think their midfield's been underrated a little bit because they're in their prime ages. A lot yeah. of them about that 23 to 26 age bracket. We see here, Shuey, Prittis obviously won the Brownlow. Gaff, you know, all in the real Marston, sweet yep. spot, aren't yeah. they, Jase? You know? well, look, I, yeah. I just love the way Adam Simpson's got them playing. And just talking about those players to come back in, Jared, they're somewhere down the track going to have the luxury of picking players that are in the best form. Mm -hmm. Not just picking players because they think that's the best lineup we've got or they're the best we can put out in the park. To think they're going to get stronger, given the start they've had to the season, augurs very, very well for how they're going to go come September. They've got a star up forward, Jason. He's just oh. about uh, my favourite forward at the moment because yeah. his work rate is phenomenal. He's uh, taking big marks and he's also mm. crumbing goals. He presents and he crash packs. He does it all, Josh Kennedy. And he's given them a great uh, focal point. And this is where it's going to be interesting when Darling is available, just how well mm. the mix and the chemistry works. Well, I think it should help you, uh, Jared. I always believed, you know, it was a lot easier to play better football when you had another key forward there. Uh, I, you know, I like this. This is second yeah. effort, third effort. This would have been goal of the year the gone through. If you had a kick that, oh, yeah. a supreme And effort. it was close, too. Yeah, it I was think, yeah. Just on the line. 
He, he's, he's got a real all-round game. He, he's got the height. He's got good speed, good endurance. A lot of players really struggle. And, and the Geelong defenders struggled to keep up with him, didn't they? They do play a little bit loose, but he certainly gave Harry Taylor the runaround. What about your man, though, uh, Jared? Eh? Love Nick, no. The has love child. Has he done something? He actually played all right. Did, you, okay. did you give him the votes? I would have given him three votes on the day. Uh, yes, you did. Honey. You did. <laughs> I didn't did take that through over here on the Eastern Seaboard, did they? I think it was just great to see him back to his absolute best. A double-handed tap, I think, is almost a throw. But uh, this is almost back to his uh, very best all-Australian form. In fact, he might have set himself a new level. I don't think anybody in the country has missed that particular mark. I've seen it replayed about a thousand times. He's been challenged to take marks. And uh, the challenge and the criticism hasn't uh, missed him. He said to David King after the match off air, I said, I know I've only taken two marks today, <laughs> but that one wasn't a bad one, was exactly. it? Exactly. I think that's worth about ten marks. But uh, as long as he's taken a couple of big contested marks a game, that's all right. And we spoke about that last week. Two marks is the average for us.